Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. So Ryan, what is with the umbrella? Well, Judy, I know the Rose Festival Parade has been canceled, but I also know it's Mother Nature in Oregon at Rose Festival time, so I'm prepared. <laughs> and you know what else you should be prepared for? A new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. In rain or shine, you'll know that Garden Time has great information. And coming up in the show today, we're going to talk about that nemesis of gardeners, the yellow jacket. Also on the show today, a backyard makeover with hardscapes. But coming up first, indoor and outdoor containers. Well, we all love containers on our porches or our decks. Well, maybe there's a different way to do them. I'm with Eve from Alice Garden Centers. And Eve, you have a little bit of a different kind of palette of plants here for us. Yeah, we're uh, thinking outside of the container. Um, since houseplants have become so popular, we have a larger variety of them. And mixing them in with your containers outside is a really fun way to just add more variety to your containers. So it's fun. Yeah, so we've got some tropicals and okay. some indoor and outdoor plants that we are going to play with. Great. Now, so what do we have here? What's this first one? This is a beautiful bromeliad. Wow. Um, it's one of my favorites. I love the silver color of it, and it goes really well with the pot right now, so we're kind of mimicking the silvers together. Nice. Uh, and then to go with that, we have some nice foliage of the Japanese Ooh, holly fern. Oh, look at that fern. Oh, that's yes. beautiful with the green. Um, you can also do um, another tropical fern. So this one is a perennial. Uh, this one is an indoor plant. Or if you want to mimic the silver again, we have this Ooh, lovely... Uh, red fern. How pretty. That's, right? That looks that really pretty. nice with that. And then so we're getting a little bit of pink going on here. To add some more, we've got these great fuchsias. This is a little Peter Pan fuchsia. Add a little pop of pink to bring out the pinks from the center here and here. And then you can put in a polka dot plant in the front, which would be really cute. Very nice. Or we've got more pink in the begonias, some annuals in there. Very nice. Which has the nice uh, dark foliage too that kind of makes everything else pop out a little bit more. And then what about a spiller? Do you have any spillers? We do have a spiller. This Ooh, one is that. so fun. It's the licorice plant and it's so soft Aww, and fuzzy. I love it. And that really pulls it together too. So you're, you're kind of really bringing more of the colors together so that it really makes a cohesive. That's really a good tip for yes. people because they are always at a loss like, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of pick a palette and then keep going with it. So if you like your silvers and your blues, pick things that are silvers and blues and then add a little pop of color with the pinks or um, reds even. Ah, and we do have some other colors because if pink isn't your palette, then we have some <laughs> bolder ones. Yes, if you want to go very bold, the, bana the red banana Fun. is fantastic. This is definitely our thriller for the okay. center. Um, and then mimicking again the reds in our pot and in this beautiful hookah down here. Very We've got nice. some more reds. Um, and here's this guy made a resurgence. All uh, right, we can put him put in too. Put a little silver in there, and then it's bringing out the reds from the pot and the red banana. Excellent, and a grass. I love that texture yes. with these big leaves, and then you have some thin yes. leaves. Yes, you definitely want to mix up your texture. So okay. you have this nice, big, thick, broad leaf, and then you want some nice, flowy grasses. Excellent. That you can pet and play with. <laughs> That'd be pretty over on the side. All right. We've also got this guy, the prayer plant, which is very, very nice. I would put him almost in the front so he hangs All over right, a little bit. All right, we're going to move this calibracoa. Oh, that looks neat. And so that's kind of your spiller. Yes, exactly. Excellent. Yeah. Well, that is really nice. I love that. And then, so red bananas, I know that I was on the Owl's website um, mm -hmm. last fall. So you have a really cool video and a tip for that. Yes, one um, our, of our assistant managers, Peter, has bananas that he's kept for years. And um, he's got a secret tip on how to keep them year round. So um, check our website for that. All right, well, mm -hmm. thanks. And then another kind of bright colors here. This is great. Yes, this is this spring, screams summer. Uh -huh. It's all the bright oranges, kind of a sunset feel to it. We've Ooh. got a dracaena, another house plant in here and then we've got this little guy is a sweet potato vine mm -hmm. that's the blackie it actually puts on a really cute little pink flower too which is fun um, and then a bromeliad um, mimic the oranges in the begonia and then this calancho is just nice once it blooms out it's just full and full of blooms it's gorgeous that is nice and I love this pot with it yes yeah the nice shiny kind of bronze color is really nice 
Well, you really helped us a lot because I think those tips of um, echoing the colors mm -hmm. and then textures are yes. really kind of fun because it really makes it more interesting and more exciting. Yes. Yeah. And you can't you can't do it wrong. Uh, I promise. You just pick things <laughs> out that you like and it'll make a beautiful container. <laughs> so Eve, we have all these beautiful things, but what about mechanics? So uh, you're going to need potting soil. Of course. And <laughs> I would recommend our Al's potting all soil. Right. Um, it's great for both the indoor and outdoor plants. And then you're going to want some fertilizer. And you could use a slow release fertilizer so you don't have to fertilize as much because it's not they're not as profuse of bloomers as our um, annuals usually are. And then I would give them a little bit of a kick every two weeks with our water soluble fertilizer. Ah, we've made it so easy. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And so exciting and creative. Well, if you have any questions about these lovely containers please go to Al's Garden Home. They have four different locations and people that are so creative to help you create these beauties right at your own home. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. So for the parts of your life that just can't stop, it's essential to keep moving forward safely. And now it's easier than ever to own a brand new Subaru from Capital. Not only can you shop hundreds of Subarus online and get questions answered instantly, but now you can test drive, finance, and even complete your purchase all from the comfort of your home. So keep planning for the future. We'll be here to help make the road ahead just a little bit smoother. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We're proud of our industry-leading, state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. Well, I am delighted to be here with Amy from the Regional Water Providers Consortium, and we're going to be talking about water use in the summer because it really is a, a whole different world for watering. So first of all, you know, we want to conserve water. I think a lot of us, gardening especially, we love our yards, but we want them to be beautiful, healthy, but we still want to save water. Yes. So what are some steps that we can go through to do that? Yeah, so it's really important to actually understand how much you're putting on your lawn. So a lot of us just turn our sprinklers on and we don't right. actually know how much water is going on to the grass. Um, so we actually suggest signing up for the weekly watering number. And what, what does that mean, a weekly so watering So the number? weekly watering number is um, a number that we'll send out to you. We recommend about an inch a week to water your lawn. Okay. Um, you can sign up at regionalh2o.org. So I have to stop you right there yeah. though. How, how do I measure water that I use on my lawn? That That's seems a great like a question. process. <laughs> yes. That's a great question. So you can actually use a tuna can. Oh. So we suggest putting two tuna cans out. Um, you'll do one next to the spray head itself and one a couple feet away. You'll turn your and system. Why, why do you do that? I mean, yeah, is it... so you're going to want to average the two of these. Okay. Just to, you know. Because there's different amounts going out. Exactly. Oh, okay, yep. that makes sense. Yeah, so that's going to help you get the best um, estimate for how much that water is going down. So what you'll do is you'll turn it on for 15 minutes, turn it off, and take an average of the two and see how much water actually is going into the can in that 15 minutes. And then that gives you a specific amount of usage per that 15 minutes, right? Yeah, exactly. And then that's going to help you establish that schedule. And our website has a great chart on there that will help you break that up into two watering segments for the week. And so if they go to the website, they can get that information and then they can double check 
that that their facts are accurate because you guys have so much information yes, on do. there. And then they, when they sign up, they'll actually you'll help us all remember this is this is happening now. It's going to be hotter this week. Yep. Do this. And so what other what other ways can they save water when they start doing this for themselves? Yeah, so this will just give them a really good idea of this week it's a little warmer. It's according to your zip code, which is great. So nice. specific to your area, how much water that you're going to need. So um, really just helping you get in that weekly reminder of exactly how much water you need to put down. And you'll really get to where you know how long your it system... It becomes a will, habit, yeah, doesn't it? Your right? system will, <laughs> yeah, you'll get to learn your system really well. Well, you know, there you have it. You've seen us several years in a row now talk about being wise with the use of water, and we always go to Regional Water Providers Consortium for that information. So if you're thinking about doing this, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the website, get all the information, measure your water, and use it wisely. Amy, what a pleasure. Thank you, Thank my friend. Thank you so much. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save five dollars on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good, deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. For 95 years and four generations, Shriners Gardens has been hybridizing and growing award-winning iris. With the largest selection available, Shriners Gardens online catalog hosts hundreds of varieties from classic bearded iris, reblooming and fragrant iris, dwarf iris, and more. Also available online, hybrid daylilies. Shriners Gardens, bringing a rainbow of color to gardens everywhere since 1935. Online at ShrinersGardens.com. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Well, I am at Northwest Garden Nursery with Marietta and Ernie O'Byrne. And so Ernie, I've only been here for hellebore time and I've never been here this late in the season and it's spectacular, I think, any time of the year. Oh, well, thank you very much. So yes. when did you move here? How did this all start? Well, we uh, bought the property, my aunt bought the property in 72 and we got together in 77 and I had a farm over in no tie. A uh, great property, but not a very great house. So we decided her house was better, so <laughs> I sold my property and moved in here. <laughs> and the garden started from about 85 on. We had water problems before mm -hmm. that, uh, just low quantity. And um, then we drilled some wells and things improved a bit. Uh, we still have to be careful, but um, uh, from that time on, about 85, uh, and then we started a nursery. Uh, we did landscape maintenance and uh, started a nursery to be able to help people install in areas of their garden. And then Roger Gossler <laughs> said, well, why don't you just start a little nursery? And we said, well, we're doing landscape maintenance. And he said, well, just open on Saturday. <laughs> so that's what we did for many years, and then we did uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then we got interested in hellebores. Ah. So. 
Well, really, you had to have some kind of a nursery to grow plants because you have so many interesting plants that you probably couldn't find anywhere at that time. Well, that was the challenge, is we loved, we were plant collectors, really. Mm. We grew from seeds, a lot of seed exchanges, and traveled all over the world and collected plants. And uh, so the challenge was to put them into a pleasing arrangement in the garden, even though it was a plant collection. Because there's so many different plants. I mean, uh, you know, sometimes you could see that somebody really likes this kind of plant or that kind of plant mm -hmm. or from China or from somewhere else, but really you have so many different kinds. Well, we really do love plants. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we see plants and then we, uh, you know, we've never been uh, collectors of one genre like mm -hmm. some people do. They're, our tastes are pretty eclectic. And really, there's something going on at any time. I mean, the hellebores are the star of the show in the late winter, early spring, but really now there's so much going on. There is. That's one of the things we do strive to do is have interest in the garden at all times of year. And really, people can come out any time of the year, but you really need a heads up so you're home, correct? <laughs> right. Yeah. We do need to be home. There's a closed gate, so you're welcome to drive by and take a chance. If the gate's <laughs> open, you're welcome to come in, but... Um, the gate may be closed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And so now I want to talk to Marietta about this book. And so sure. we are so fortunate in Oregon here that there's so many authors and authors with interesting things to say. And Marietta, the book is just lovely. Oh, and you. it's called A Tapestry Garden. And so how did this all come about? Well, I'll have to tell the story of Tom Fisher. <laughs> Tom Fisher is the acquisition editor at Timber Press. And he has a way of talking uh, <laughs> and leaving out some details that make writing a book sound very easy. <laughs> just write 40,000 words, a few chapters, and just write several articles, and that's it. Well, there's a lot more to it, but that's how the book happened. And once we got involved and realized there's a lot more to it, it was too late. So we had to finish <laughs> <You're committed. laughs> Right, we were committed. Marietta, the book is called A Tapestry Garden, so mm -hmm. what were you trying to accomplish in all that? I think we wanted to share our love of plants and gardening, basically. Now, we did go through different phases according to the soils uh, here that were already there. We knew Woodland Garden was the first because there were some big leaf maples here that don't exist anymore, so we started gardening under them. We had very little water, so that was a constraint. Then we got into rock garden and alpine plants, <laughs> which don't take up much room and much water. So all around the house, there are alpine plants. And then Ernie said, oh, how about a conifer garden? So it got stretched out. Conifers don't need much water, but they were boring. I mean, to me, just <laughs> conifers. So I started planting in between. Then we also had a vegetable garden, very useful. Well, the soil was very good there because we used a lot of amendments. Well, it got too big, so how about perennials, beautiful flowers? And then you kind of wove that all together till today's garden. Yeah, today's garden now, because we started with a woodland garden under trees, we started with the alpine garden in an open area. It was, goes from room to room, so to speak. Uh, in the vegetable garden, which also is perennial garden, the chaparral garden, which is a dryland garden. It all had its own area, so yes, it is all not really divided up, but you wander from one right. garden into the next. Right, and through this book, you can really see every one of those rooms, and you really have to come down here. So put that on your list to make an appointment to come on down here, and really, this book is something to see. It's got the lovely pictures that show it at any time of the year. So if you're interested in this book, please go to one of your favorite bookstores or to go to Timber Press. Thank you so much. It's a lovely book. Thank you for inv inviting us. Sure. Thank you. Most of us are familiar with deer in our garden, you know, eating our roses. Um, I was surprised the other morning to come out and find a nice young buck 
who is obviously very hungry. So he had started to eat things in my yard that he's never eaten before. Like my coral bells, he's gone through and devoured the tops off of these. He also has grazed through and started munching on all of my hostas and various others. He's also taken down my roses and hydrangea trees and some other plants in my yard. But this young buck is just looking for this young, fresh new growth that's emerging on all of our plants right now. So, you know, one way to deter them is a product like this. This is called Deer Defeat, and it's an organic, natural-based product. And it's made from, like, putrefied eggs and garlic and some really kind of some stinky stuff that the deer don't like to eat. Um, so, nice thing about this is it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is just kind of mess the plants like this, and it just puts a little bit of coating over there, and it's a taste that the deer really don't like to smell or eat. And so I'll do this about once a week for the first couple weeks. And then after that, you have to do a little maintenance about once a month. Nice thing about this is once it goes on and dries, the rain doesn't wash it off. So it's an easy product to use. It's natural, it's organic, and it'll help keep those deer away. So that is our tip of the week. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terracasa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar-powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Well, you know, we love to do projects at our home, but sometimes they're beyond us. So I am with Vicki, the homeowner here. And so Vicki, you've been in this house and you had some challenges with this front yard. Yes, we did. We had a slope. Also, because the property had been abandoned for two and a half years, we, on the one hand, that's a negative because <laughs> you can't move into a beautiful place, but we used it as a challenge oh. and created what would you see from an open palette. That is nice. So then you didn't have to work on that slope. You had now a terrace garden to work with. Yes, yes. And the wall came and they built this beautiful wall and they also did new stairs in the front. Ah, and that's a safety issue because the other ones were kind of crumbly. Yes, they were. <laughs> and then you wanted some other projects. What else were you looking for? Um, in the backyard, we wanted low, low maintenance because the front is high, high maintenance and I put gravel, and with that we put in a patio. Well, we didn't do it, the wall did it. And we had a pergola built over it. Nice. And it's lovely. Yeah. And also a driveway? And they did the driveway too. Wow, so really many things that they could do. Yes, they did. Well, it just is lovely, it's stunning. Thank you so much. Beautiful. So now I'm with Rick from The Wall, and so when you came in on this project, there were many different things that the client wanted. Yeah, this is a very typical project for us. The front yard, sloping grass, unmanageable. 
And Vicki, of course, is a great customer to work with, and her ideas, uh, we took those and we uh, created a nice front yard retaining wall and a nice level planting area for her. It's nice. And so what are the, the products there? Because it's really a unique kind of facing on it. Yeah, we did the recycled concrete retaining wall, which we've been doing for 30 plus years wow. now. <laughs> and then uh, we put a uh, capstone, it's a manufactured stone, made to look like Columbia Gorge Basalt. Yeah, that's, that's what the cap is, and then the concrete stairs. Uh, it's very nice, because Vicki can even sit on it if she's doing some gardening yeah, or it's weeding. About, yeah, it's that's about nice. right. Yeah, Very nice. Yeah. And then on the stairs, what happened with that? The stairs were an older set of steps, and um, it was to, they were in decent shape, so we did a facing on them, and then we did the uh, new buttress walls on the side, new uh -huh. concrete walls. Yeah. Rick, the stairs really came out good, and that was a safety issue, but what else did you do? Yeah, well, the stairs were needed here to, to get a nice set of steps, and then also we added lighting to this project. So um, we had a landscape lighting contractor come in and do a really nice low voltage system. That is nice. I, I bet because people walk in this neighborhood, it's nice to have that in the neighborhood. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and, and low voltage lighting is beautiful, and it'd be good to see it here at night, but it's, it, it's, it really works well. Wonderful, and then, you know, this project is 10 years old, yes. and it's like, it really has held up and it's like you know sometimes concrete is concrete but it's wonderful yeah it's great to revisit these projects mm -hmm. isn't it and, and we've worked so many for so many years for Vicki and, and then she has just done an amazing job of her mature landscaping it's here. so it's, it's been fun to come back and visit it it is beautiful so you just don't build walls you're you're you really do many different things with concrete and with stone we really do we do we've got a great concrete crew so we do all types of uh, flat work concrete stairs driveways patios things like that and then retaining walls uh, anything from stone to a recycled concrete to poured concrete to, to concrete block. Oh, that's amazing. And then, so I, Vicki mentioned that she had a pergola built, and so you really just set her up with somebody that could do that too. Uh, yeah, we, we worked with um, her, actually her remodeling contractor on the on the pergola, and he's very good, did an excellent job. And then we have other contractors that came in and helped with the uh, design, the landscape work wow. for her, the lighting and the irrigation. That is nice because it's nice as a customer, a client that you want to get it all done and you want to find somebody that can give you people that are um, just great cap craftsmen and that you, you trust. Yeah, we, we, they're twofold. We love to refer good people and we like it when our customers get a good project from someone that, that we know and can trust. Uh. Well, you know, this is just a bit beautiful project, as you can see from all the photos. A wonderful garden, too. So if you are thinking about doing some projects, go to the Garden Time website, and you can click over to the wall, and you can see what they can do for your home and garden. Thanks so much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our pleasure. I'm at Joy Creek Nursery today in Scappoose with Anna, and Anna, you are also a designer, a landscape designer with Optic Verve. Yes. And you love to do big gardens, but you also love to do these small tabletop gardens. So tell us a little bit about these creations. Oh, they're like little gems. They're basically a planter without the pot. <laughs> so they're very accessible. I mean, you don't have, you don't need a lot of money. You don't need anything because you can put plant right on the hard surface like this. That's amazing. And all you need to do, first of all, it's another fun activity to get started, is to go hiking. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have time, I've actually pulled over many times. <laughs> I see some, some rotting thing in the ditch and I'm like, oh, I need that. Right, right. So I'll, I'll stop over and, and I'll, I'll, I'll grab it. And then here's one of those. That's very cool. Yeah. And, um, and you've really learned this from Richie Steffens mm -hmm. from the Miller Botanical, who has classes yep. here a lot at Joy Creek. Yeah, and then usually once a year. He also, um, this is also a nice resource, mm -hmm. this, this book. Yeah. So really, you've, you've learned so much, but then you've done your own creativity. So how do you pick plants? How do you know what kind of plants to pick? It's the same principle as any other co-planting, I guess. You pick things that have similar light needs, sure. uh, water needs, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, I always like to put something that's evergreen, mm -hmm. you know, like, like these things. And then you can embellish with all the stuff that will go away in the winter. But you need something that make it look good year round. And also remember that it's, it's like a planter. It's not going to last forever. So it's totally fine if something looks bad, yank it and put something else in. Right. So, but it's a really fun little thing. And it, it's a very, we're all in an urban jungle pretty much, unless those of us are happy enough to live out, outside of the city. Right. We have lots of concrete, lots of hard surfaces. And you can tell from the houseplant craze that this is kind of becoming a hunger. It's, it's, Plants fill a void whether we're aware of it or not. Right. So this is a really good way to sort of get started. It's a miniature garden, miniature landscape, sure. and it's you can fit it almost on your windowsill if you don't have a 
balcony. That's so. true. And so for basics, mm -hmm. just to tell us, you don't use, really use potting soil, you kind of create your own mix. Yeah, and here I'm actually using Joy, Joy Creek standard mix. It has a lot of, of uh, wood-based, uh, but it's something that has a lot of air. If I do a lot of sun gardening, I'll also use gravel. Okay. So I tend to mix in a few. So it's good for drainage couples. Yeah, too. good for drainage. But like I said, it's like a lot of times things that you put in pots, it gets too wet and, mm -hmm. and it doesn't drain enough. This one, you'll never have to worry about drainage All right. because it just spills right off. But you also have to water it every day. All right. So we're so going to actually build one mm -hmm. and then we'll come back and show you the results. In a relatively short time, you have this little miniature garden, little miniature landscape that is just precious. Yes, and it's so much fun to make. And really, you can tweak it down the road because, yep. like any garden, sometimes things don't perform. Exactly. Things die, and then it was like, wow, that got awfully big. That doesn't, you know, that throws off my balance. Right. The one thing about stifling them like this, because some of them are, would normally get bigger they're not going to get as big because oh, they don't sure. have their optimal conditions. Right. But they will still be fine. Right. And I love but that you have like a bag of tricks. So yep. have lots of things available while you're creating because things change. You might have something in your mind, but it kind of evolves. Yeah. And you see, oh yeah, that color's not right. And you just switch them out. Oh, I like this better. Or, right. You know, and it, it's, a, it's a fun place, which is what makes, makes it so fun to come to a place like Joy Creek right. because it's a primarily a mail order nursery. Everything is in small pots. They have gazillion little things oh, choices, that, are, uh, that are just, and you can just create. Create. So, Anna, it's a little bit loose right now. So, how do you help that kind of get together? Good question. Uh, so, ideally, you'll want to build this one at home mm -hmm. in, in the spot where it's going to go. But if you have to, for, for whatever me reason, move it, uh, fishing line. Sure. I got 40 pound line right here you just, just tie it. wrap it up mm -hmm. and and then you any any normal strength person should be able to lift a, a little thing like this and then you can bring it home and of course with time you need to water it every day okay because like i said it doesn't hold any water really beyond what the soil and the, the wood holds and the plants but it will eventually be all together it will all knit it all together the roots will do their job and, and you will have this great little sculpture so really, this is a great project. It's such a fun thing to do for this summertime to have an addition to your garden. So really, come out to Joy Creek or give Anna a, a buzz on her website and you can maybe meet her out here. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. You can use water wisely this summer with these simple tips. Periodically, check your watering system to make sure it is working correctly. Tighten hose connections and adjust sprinklers to water plants and not the pavement. Give your lawn and garden a deep soak twice weekly instead of watering daily. Skip the fertilizer until the fall and mow your lawn less often. Taller grass holds moisture in longer between waterings. Get more water-wise gardening tips at regionalh2o.org. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Let us help you bring color and texture into your garden. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Many of our plants are evergreen for year-round interest. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. It's time for Barry's Brews and Barbecue at French Prairie Gardens. 
And though things have changed on the farm, you can still get your berries, brews, and barbecue to go. Check out our website for special packages and place your order for berries, brews, and barbecue. So I am out here at Shriner's Iris Garden, but we're not with the irises right now. We're with the day lilies and Ben, ben, ben Shriner, that's who you are. This is kind of your, your girl that you're taking over, isn't it? The whole day lily part of this. That's right. We got the day lilies three years ago um, from the hybridizer Bill Marriott in California. And so this is the third year we're growing them. And you know, I love day lilies to begin with, but this, this grouping that you guys are selling are breathtaking the blend of colors the thickness of them is the so we wanted to cover about some things like how do you transplant them is there special needs they have compared to the other ones so let's just jump right in with what about just moving them or planting them to begin with how do we do that sure um so i have one here for you we can work with um so daylilies can be transplanted anytime from april till september so even though this one is showing buds and it's about to bloom you can still dig and divide right now. Really? So, yeah. And so you, you want to try to get as many fans as you can. Uh, we, By fans, say what you mean yeah, by that. Yeah, so this is, this is one fan. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And each fan will have one scape. Okay. And the scape is the, the stock that produces the bloom. Um, so we'll, we ship all of our day lilies double fan, two fans. And you can either plant it straight in like this, or you can divide it. And to divide it, you just take the two fans and just pull it apart. See, that's really simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is really simple. So now you have two plants. And so then when you, when you go to plant them, uh, you know, we hear so much about the best way to plant anything that we're just planting, and it's all this extra s the steps to do it. So tell us what you would do with those now. Right, so it's, it's real easy. You just take it, I'll put it on the ground here. You want to trim the leaves, so you just take a shovel. Oh my, yeah, that's simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if, the, if the roots are too long, you can always trim the roots. Wow. The roots will regenerate. And then I have a hole here, and you're just going to put it in the hole. And how, how deep do you put it in then? You, you only go a couple inches down. So you, wanna, you can kind of see where the green is on the, on the uh, foliage. You don't want to go any, any deeper than that. So okay. just right about right there. And then you, you did no fertilizing, no starter stuff. You just put it in good soil and just, put it in. Yeah, put it in, and then water it in, and it's good to go. And then... What is there that are keys to making them bloom? Because they really do appear to be very easy. Yeah, so just, you want at least half day of full sun. Um, you want to make sure you get a, at least an inch of water every week. Um, and then you, you want to amend the soil with a fertilizer such as a 10-10-10, or um, compost like we have here, horse manure, anything like that. And then the varieties that you guys have is, just keeps expanding. Mm -hmm. So all of these are sold in at your website, correct? Yes, shrinersgardens.com. We have, I think, over 500 varieties available. Wow, wow. Yeah. And I have to tell you, you know, we got them about a year or so ago. Mine are just setting buds now, and the, the difference is the old day lilies are stunning, and they're hardy, and they're easy, but these new ones, there's just a beauty about them that is unique to that group of the family. Yeah, they're, the newer ones are a little fancier. Um, they have more edging more intricate colors and patterns. Right, sure. right. Yeah. Well, you know, as I said, we at Garden Time all got these and we love them. They're just an exquisite blooming day lily. So if you're thinking, I really want to add those to my garden, all you have to do is go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can find out when to buy them, which I think you said they're, you're shipping right now, aren't Correct, you? Correct, yeah. Well, so there you have it. You can have it in the ground as soon as you get your uh, new day lily. Thank you so much, Ben. Appreciate yeah, thank it. Thank you, Juan. Well, we have a great project for your kids or for your family. It's our kindergarten segment. And so it's leaf painting. And you know, Father's Day is coming and you can make that for cards for dad or for any occasion. So the first step is to go out in your garden and pick leaves. So we have Dean helping us. And so Dean, which leaf did you pick? I picked these tiny leaves, which will really help. I picked a cactus plant and a strawberry plant. Ah, mm. and William, what did you pick? I got a geranium leaf and a wonderful grape leaf. All right, and so I picked Japanese maple. So what we wanna do is, we, you can use any kind of paint. We're using acrylic paint or you can use temper paints. And what you wanna do, what we found best, is use the top of the leaf, not the bottom of the leaf, but the top. So you get a little bit of paint on your brush and you actually paint it right on the leaf. Dean, you wanna help? Yes, yeah, sure. You can and so you yours. paint mm -hmm. it right on there and get as much on all the way to the tips. 
And you're going to get it on your fingers a little bit, but that's okay because it's going to wash right up. You got to get and then messy sometimes. I guess you, do, you do, for sure. So what you're going to do is then put it on top of the paper. So it's really easy to use um, the paper for a card. You just use any kind of paper stock that you have at home. And William, show us. So you want to fold it in half for a big card. And just so one fold in half. And then if you want to make a smaller one. You want to fold that one? Yeah, sure. There you you go, just fold it again. So pretty easy. It really is easy. If you try to get it right. There you go. And so we're painting our, pic our leaves. And then, Dean, you want to put your strawberry leaf on one of the papers? You got uh, all your paint on there? Finish off the blue first. Okay. I have all mine on, Judy. All right, William, I'm <laughs> going to give you this wax paper. So now what do I do with this wax paper? You put the wax paper right on top of that leaf, okay. and you want to cover it. And then you take a rolling pin. You want to roll it, Dino? Then. And then just roll it because you want that paint to be transferred from sticker. the leaf onto the paper. Just, one just once there. or twice, and mm -hmm. now take off the wax paper, and now you want to also lift that leaf off as soon as possible because you don't want it to dry onto the paper. Okay, and now Dean, you put yours down, and here's some wax paper. Put it right on top. Did you want me to roll on yours, Dino? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <Roll on> yours. <laughs> Woohoo! It's great to do it with a bunch of people because you have lots of help here. And lots of fun. Yeah, there. And Okay, now lift off the wax paper, and then lift off your leaf. And voila, look at that. You have two different colors. And if you don't have a rolling pin, you can just press down with your hand. And remember to use a little bit less paint because it's better for the prints. And so then you let it dry. And then once it's dry, you open it up and you can write Dear Dad or maybe to Grandma, it's her birthday, Happy any birthday. kind of holiday that you want to send cards. It's really easy project. Do it with friends, do it with family. And you have cards to send to all of those friends and family. For step-by-step -step instructions, you can go to gardentime.tv. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. Repels All from Bonide works three ways through touch, taste, and smell with all natural ingredients so you can enjoy the garden you dreamed of without unwanted visitors. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. I'm at the wonderful Portland Nursery on Stark Street and I'm here with Laura. And Laura, you know, I know that a lot of people right now are really excited, and I love this, about growing their own fruits and vegetables. Yes. However, one of the things that you have done for so long, and I've known you a long time now, <laughs> you've really promoted the medicinal side of nature yes. that we can grow a lot of right here. So first of all, let's just jump right in yeah. with some plants that you guys carry that we can grow. Yeah, and safely too. Yeah. Um, I got a little collection of lemon scented stuff going on here. We've got lemon grass, lemon verbena, lemon thyme, and lemon scented geranium. And why that? Why is that? Because important? there's a myth about the citronella plants. Yeah. And um, it, having one plant will keep mosquitoes away from your whole patio. And I've heard that too. Yeah, no. Not going to work. And, and give us the reason why scientifically that probably won't happen. Because what you need to repel mosquitoes is the essential oil, distilled. Okay. And that primarily comes from lemongrass. And you need a lot of it to make... To make that effect happen. Yeah, to make that effect happen and to get a significant amount of essential oil. So what else then would you get this kind of stuff for, like the lemongrass? Why mm -hmm. would you get that? What would you use it for? In I medicinal? love it in, in tea. So just like oh, drying okay. it and, and putting see, it in I tea. forget that. Yeah. I forget that sometimes even a beverage that you drink mm -hmm. is actually the medicine that helps the body and you're yeah. actually unaware of it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the lemon verbena is a great fragrance. It's another one that's nice in tea. So I've 
had lemon verbena soap too. It, I love that. Yeah. You know why I really love it? Mm. <laughs> it reminds me, mm. my grandmother always used lemon pledge. And it's, oh, to me, it smells so just true. like lemon pledge. <laughs> it's really true, yeah. This looks like a sage of some sort. Am it I is. wrong on that? Yep, that's white sage. Um, so this one's very fragrant, the leaves. It's not one you use in cooking. Um, it's one that people typically burn um, to kind of... Oh, what? You mean like in a house when you clean it? What is that called? Yeah, um, cleansing. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, yep, cool. For, so for like a sacred space, so to speak. Um, and rosemary is another one that you can use for both culinary and for cleansing nice. as well. Um, and then I brought some bee balm. It's a nice fragrant one, great one for attracting butterflies and honeybees and hummingbirds. Uh -huh. um, but also a really nice fragrant foliage that I um, harvest and use in teas. And again, another tea one, right? Yep. And then this yeah. looks like an herb again. Uh, good old English thyme. Um, some, so many of our common culinary herbs have medicinal uses as well. This one's great for like um, respiratory. Oh, when you're okay. kind of stuffed up, um, people will harvest thyme put it in a bowl with some hot water and you'll get steam and then you put a towel over it's your head. It's nature's and you, vapor rub, it, yes, rub then. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well yeah. now you have a bunch of stuff that yes. you cut out of your garden I this do. morning. What is it? I have all kinds of fun things. Some for you to eat. Um, violets are edible. You know, just because we've been friends for so long, you're, you're not going to feed me something one. I'm going to regret. I'll eat you? one <laughs> okay. too. So you just eat the whole thing? Just the flower. Mm -hmm. Well, oh, there's a little flavor. I don't know how to define it. I don't know if it would be, I don't know, it's good. Yeah, it's subtle. These ones are subtle. These aren't the fragrant violets, they're a hybrid. But all violets are um, edible. And a lot of times pe cake decorators will crystallize them right, right. and put them on cakes. It's now coming to almost like a uh, kind of, a, a broccoli flavor, or yeah. cauliflower, it a wabi, something like that. It does kind of have that flavor, yeah. And what else you got there? Um, I also have another edible, our forget-me-nots. And really, those those are medicinal or just an edible? Just an edible. So William, take a taste of the forget-me-not flowers. I will flowers. indeed. Hmm. So, why would we eat these? Because they're pretty. <laughs> You're, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, it's a great way to spice up a salad in the springtime. And I could taste that. I could see that in a salad yep. and the taste of it. Yeah. And then what else here? Um, I have lemon balm, another great tea herb. Um, and then I also have some bee balm. Uh, again, Wonderful. I use it for tea. Um, good old weedy comfrey, which you use for oils. Uh -huh. Raspberry leaf, another great tea herb. And um, pungent lovage. Yes, it is. It's, but that smells like a lot of celery yeah. right there. <laughs> it's a lot of celery. And then yeah. you also have this little basket of yeah. things. Yeah, I make things throughout the year and, and buy things. Um, this is uh, St. John's wort oil that I made in the summer. Um, it turns the oil red, and I put a little lavender in it for and I put and some peas. on my hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you did, I know. And then um, we have a hydrosol, which is uh, white sage and rosemary. So. Yes. Okay. I smell that. Yep. And this is, so this is, now we're actually being able to buy stuff like this, but yep. you also can help people learn make, how to make them themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there you have it. You know, there's so much in nature that we often forget about. And if you want to learn how the, uh, each plant has some uh, value medicinally in your own garden, you can come down to Portland Nursery on Stark Street and chat with Laura here. As Great. always, my friend, thank you so much. Thank you, William. <laughs>
It includes the box of pectin, some fresh lemon juice, and some sugar, and of course your strawberries. Now we take our strawberries that had the stems on, we're going to remove the stem, all the stem, and we're going to put them in a colander and run fresh water over them, swirl them around and get them nice and clean. Then we're going to take those strawberries and we're going to put them in, and I like to use a kettle. It has nice square edges down the side and you're going to take and you're going to mash up the fruit until you get just a pulpy consistency. Nothing hard to do about that. Now that we've got our berries all in our kettle here, we've used the potato masher and it takes about one to two minutes just to get a nice consistency. Then we're going to add our fresh squeezed lemon juice. I've got a quarter cup here I'm adding to the berries. And you want to blend that right in with the, with the smashed berries. Then the next thing that we're going to do is start adding our pectin. And it's always a good idea to go nice and slow on adding the pectin. Not all of it at one time. Just keep blending in just a little bit at a time. Add a little more, blend it in. I'm going to do a little bit more. And remember, use the whole package. This is no time to scrimp and try and save to make an extra batch. You want to measure exactly like the recipe says to make sure that your jam turns out nice and sweet. This is the pectin that I like to use. This is what my mom used and this is what I grew up knowing how to make strawberry jam. It's MCP. It's a product of SureGel and we have it available in our farm market year round. Now I want you to keep stirring and we're going to stir this every five minutes till we got 30 minutes on the clock done and that will make sure that the pectin is thoroughly dissolved in our jam. Now that our pectin is set for the 30 minutes, just like the recipe says, we're going to go ahead and add our sugar now. I've removed the potato masher that I used to crush my star strawberries and I went to using a spatula. That way you can get every little corner and every little bit stirred in with the sugar. And I know this looks like a lot of sugar, but this is exactly what the recipe says. Pretty soon, it takes about ooh, five more minutes of stirring. We get all that sugar dissolved. Then we're going to be able to have a taste test and get it put in our jars. Now we've got this sugar pretty well stirred in here. And what we're going to do is take a little sample. The, the texture between your tongue and the jam will let you know whether or not the sugar is dissolved. Mmm, that's delicious. We're ready to put it in the jar. Okay, so now we're ready to put it in our jar. And jar, yes, I prefer a glass jar. It's reusable and easy to clean. Make sure you run them through your dishwasher before you put your jam in them. All we have to do is pour into the jars. And you can see, this is taking about one cup of jam. And our recipe here today is gonna make seven cups of jams. So seven of this size jar, or we can put it into our pint, which would make three and a half. And putting it in my glass jar, I'm going to leave one half inch headspace because I'm going to freeze it in my freezer. Now we're going to fill up our jars. Remember to leave that half inch headspace. Put your lid on it and make sure you mark it so you can keep track of it. Frozen berry jam is good up from one to two years. For more information and great tips, just go to our website, www.baumanfarms.com. Well, now this might not be a story that is going to fascinate all of us, but it is something that we all should hear about, and it's about yellow jackets. I'm here with Heather Stoven, and you are part of the OSU Extension in Yamhill County, right? Yes, I am. So, first of all, let's just let's just jump right into yellow jackets. I think a lot of us want to know what what exactly good do they bring to the world? What is their purpose for existence? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, yeah, so yellow jackets can actually be a beneficial insect, even though they, of course, can at times cause issues for us in our in our homes and that sort of thing. But they can as well um, feed on other insects. Oh. So soft-bodied insects, caterpillars in your garden that are feeding on your vegetables, that right. sort of thing. So, so then just they because they look evil doesn't mean that they don't <laughs> necessarily do some kind right. of good for we gardeners. <laughs> right, exactly. No, they can, they can be beneficial. And then, you know, I've always, and I've had personal experience with this in my own uh, garden when mowing the lawn, all of a sudden 
they're coming out of the ground. Are they mm -hmm. just ground dwellers? So not always. Most of the time they're going to have ground nests, but they can also form nests um, above ground as well. Right, right. Well then I'd also want to know though, when you know, we always think of them in the summer and, and fall because that's when we're really outside a lot and we mm -hmm. interact there more. But what, what is their life cycle and why should we be paying attention to them here in the springtime even? Sure. So what happens is in the fall, um, new queens are produced in, in the nest from the active queen that season. Right. Um, in the fall, October, November, that colony will die off and they're not going to come back into that nest again. So if you mm -hmm. find a nest in the fall, you know, at the end of the season, it's not bothering you, leave it there because it's, you know, the queen is gonna die off. The new queens though, are going to overwinter um, that season for the winter and then they'll come out in the spring and they will then start looking for new nesting sites. So that's kind of where we're at now. They've already probably found nesting sites and are starting their new colonies, but at this time, the colonies are smaller, so if you do find a colony, it may be harder to spot this time of year because you're not going to have as many workers coming in and out of the so nest. So you're not going to see the flow of activity. You're not going to see the flow of activity, but you know, if you do notice a nest this time of year, it would be far easier to manage than another time of year, and that it's small enough that you're not going to have workers that are causing right. you quite right. as much harm as you know later on the season when they built up to hundreds or even thousands of members wow. within the one colony. And so certainly if you get this, the queens at this time of year, that even helps you in the springtime faster than if you start trying to attack later. Right, yes, okay. absolutely. And so then do you have do you have information on that so that we could send people and, and gather more information, maybe a picture of them and all of sure. that good stuff? Right, so it is, it is good to identify the insect that you have and make sure it actually is a yellow jacket. Right. So yellow jackets tend to be a little bit stockier than some other types of wasps. So they're maybe, a, the worker is about half an inch long or so, yellow and black stripe. They're not gonna be as hairy as a honeybee. So okay. honeybees, you can kind of look at them and they look a little bit fuzzier. And so a yellow jacket's gonna be really kind of a robust type wasp versus a paper wasp, which is gonna often have those thin waists. Right, and right. it has those longer legs that you can see. So those are less aggressive. So if you see those nests, and they're gonna be smaller, those, those small little nests that can often be in an eave or something like that under your house. So those um, are gonna be less aggressive and you wouldn't need to worry about them as much. So if you found some sort of wasp or um, insect that you're interested in, wanna know is this actually a yellow jacket, you could send a photo in to ask an expert or to the extension service in your local county to have it actually identified, especially if you, you know, know that there's a nest for that particular insect nearby just to you know, clarify and make sure Perfect. you're treating the right, right kind of right. insect. Well, there you have it. You know, we always want to give the best mm -hmm. information we can, and that is often going to the professionals. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for your expertise on this. Uh, go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over and get all the information you need. Thank you so all much. Right, no, thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time. And don't forget, between those showers, go out and garden. For more information about today's show, please go to GardenTime.tv. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Hey, Ryan, can I borrow that? <laughs>